It's no secret that Resident Evil is absolutely stacked with truly dark events. But of all the nightmare fuel contained therein, here are five of the darkest moments within the Resident Evil franchise. Spoilers ahead for Resident Evil 1, 2, and 7. Up first, one of the most well-known and early Doors secrets that we're introduced to, which comes from the events around July of 1998 at the Spencer Mansion. As the events of Resident Evil unfold, we learn that the super sus Wesker has taken his role as the trusted leader of stars and shepherded both his stars teams into the horrors of the Spencer Mansion and Umbrella's secret lab. He's orchestrated his team's demise by squarely placing them in the crosshairs of Umbrella's bioweapon tyrant to capture data points of the tyrant's effectiveness in combat. Can you even imagine your boss deciding he'll simply lead your entire team to their deaths? I mean, it's pretty messed up. The guy you're turning your, you know, time off request into is just plotting behind the scenes to kill you. A few months later in Resident Evil 2, we meet Sherry Birkin, the young daughter of doctors Annette and William Birkin, two brilliant scientists who collectively are responsible for the development of the G-Virus and whose callous disregard for their own daughter over basically her entire life leaves her alone and exposed to the horrors ranging from witnessing literal monsters roaming the streets to being kidnapped by police chief irons and even being infected or implanted by her own father with the g virus who had previously infected himself so after a lifetime of neglect and emotional indifference from both of her parents, Sherry ends up meeting Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy, who are not only the people who save her at multiple points in the game, but are ostensibly the first adults outside of, I don't know, maybe a teacher, to pay any attention to her and offer genuine care for her well-being. Desperately starved for any emotional connection, she immediately bonds with them as the trio escape the events of Raccoon City's destruction. In the events of Resident Evil 2, Sherry's experiences are considered especially heinous. In Raccoon City, the dedicated RPD rookie and STARS agent's sister are an elite squad who care. These are their stories. Speaking of Raccoon City Police Chief Brian Irons, in that same game, we discover not only that he is corrupt and taking bribes from Umbrella, which is already a bummer, but couple that with the earlier revelation of Captain Wesker also being corrupt, and we don't have a single hope of the RPD being effective for the people of Raccoon City. On top of that, we learn that Chief Irons has been using the Raccoon City Orphanage to funnel children to Umbrella for sick, twisted experiments. Raccoon City's most vulnerable population, literal orphans, are being exploited by the Chief of Police to line his pockets. Small, helpless children are being trafficked for human experimentation by the civil servant who is supposed to serve and protect truly a dark and terrifying death of human depravity. I don't think I can even lighten that one with a joke. It's just straight messed up. Skipping forward in time, let's take a look at the Baker family from Resident Evil 7. While Ethan Winters is relentlessly stalked through the events of the game by various members of the family, we actually discover throughout those events that the Bakers weren't always evil incarnate. Evelyn's control took a kindly mother and father 
who loved their family dearly and sought to help those in distress and turn them into dark monsters doing her bidding. And while their disturbed and arguably violent son Lucas was already a murderer before that, even he took a darker turn or escalated his violence once Evelyn intervened. Truly the conversation that you have with the mold echo of Jack Baker while Ethan is trapped in the mold himself is heartbreaking. Jack has so much love for his family and wants nothing more than to give them peace despite everything. We even see glimpses of this through the comments from the Sewer Gators film crew when discussing the history of the property. Just a lovely family who cared about each other and wanted to live a quiet life full of kindness. Based on comments from various characters, we get a sense that there is a part of you aware of the deeds that Evelyn is forcing you to do when she controls you. Meaning that Jack and Marguerite Baker were trapped inside themselves while watching them attack innocent people as well as their own children. It's truly a fate worse than death. This last entry is an easy one to miss if you aren't laboriously seeking out the files sprinkled throughout the Resi games. In Resident Evil HD, we learn of George Trevor, an architect who got the opportunity of a lifetime to design a mansion for a rich Englishman, Oswald E. Spencer. An exciting career highlight for the architect of the Trevor and Chamberlain Construction Company, who was later involved in restoring the Baker House in Dolby, Louisiana, with the classic puzzle concepts that the firm was known for. The Spencer Manor job would have greatly benefited George and his family, wife Jessica and daughter Lisa, but suddenly became a twisted trap. Only Spencer and Trevor knew the layout of the mansion and the puzzles therein. To Spencer, George had become a loose end. Spencer invited George and his family to stay at the manor during the completion of the project, only to separate and trap them. George appears to have made his way through the mansion looking for a way to escape and save his family leading him to tragically and ironically die of thirst and hunger before his own gravestone that Spencer had arranged for him to stumble upon. Meanwhile, his wife and daughter were used in early experiments with the progenitor virus. Jessica's reaction to the virus was deemed a failure and she was summarily executed. Lisa herself slowly mutated into a super strong, almost unkillable monstrosity who longed for the love of her mother. Umbrella staff bent so low as to have one employee impersonate her mother to try and psychologically exploit Lisa into obeying them so that they could control, study, and experiment on her further. Lisa, realizing this deception and suffering mentally from the effects of the virus, thought Umbrella stole her mother's face and proceeded to cut it from the woman. She became yet another Umbrella secret and was imprisoned beneath the manor for the next 28 years. During the later years of her imprisonment, she began collecting women's faces from various female Umbrella employees, and it was deemed necessary to execute her. But due to her regenerative abilities, she recovered and began living in the Arclay Mountain Forest region nearby, only to be drawn back into the manor during the Stars team's exploits and discovers her mother's corpse. Reeling from this, she jumps into a chasm and ultimately throughout those events, dies due to the explosion of the Spencer Mansion. Preceding his death, George Trevor actually wrote a historical look into the architecture of Eastern European castles and keeps, 
a book that you can actually find on a bookshelf in the Winters' home in Resident Evil Village. You know, if you want to build some sweet traps in your two-bedroom in the suburbs. Because traps worked out so well for Trevor. Wow. <laughs> this episode was a real downer, y'all. Who would have thought that in a series full of eugenics nightmare Nazis who like playing God in secret labs, that things could go lower than that? Seems like the Nazis were coming from inside the house all along. Sources used for this video are in the description below. Any other super messed up things that are in Resident Evil that you're obsessed with and think I should cover in the future? Let me know in the comments. And help me defeat the algorithm by liking and subscribing if you think I've earned it. Until next time, I'll holler at y'all later.